Hello, weirdos and weirdettes. It's me, Haunted. Today, we're going to be working on uh, the Brewmaster. Um, so, yeah, that's what we're going to be starting on today. Um, we've got him on, on base. He's primed. So, we're going to go ahead and start working on this again. Hey Panda, how are you doing? Yeah, it it uh it bounced a couple times. It looks like Twitch. It uh it's being twitchy. Kind of their thing. So how are you doing, Panda? Mmm, Black Friday goodness. Yummy. Okay, so we're just cutting in our base here, which is uh, Caliban Green, uh, kind of my go-to for Kremlin skin. Now, normally the bamboo would be a uh, painting green, but since he's green and he's got his hands wrapped around that bamboo, we might do it more toward the yellow side of like dried bamboo, although that would kind of be weird with the flexibility is showing, but I think that's what we're going to have to do because of the green green. We don't want those together. Uh, box art shows it sort of brown, actually brown brown, like not even close to tan. So yeah, that's probably what we'll do. All right, and so he's got some skin showing through those straps here and there. I'll switch over to a brush that didn't splay it all out. Hopefully still in frame there. Sorry if I wasn't. And then we'll get on the back side here. Get these the underside of his toesies. Because a drunken brewmaster's toes would definitely be referred to as toesies. Almost having a wardrobe malfunction there, aren't you? Almost. Look at that fear ferocious. Get all the tongues. Wait, what? 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 What are you talking about? How are you doing, Llama? Good to see you. Oh, the Black Friday. I see. I see. 
Yeah, I, I haven't looked at it, unfortunately, because, well, I'm, I'm, I'm streaming right now. I will definitely be taking a look afterwards, though. Weird hobby was expressing their excitement for the sale. And I was like, ooh, what's, uh, what's going on with it? And she was like, well, I got a link for you. <laughs> but it didn't have the chance to take a look. Hey, Dragon Legion, how are you doing? Welcome in. Good to see you. What have you been up to lately? Have you uh, have you been playing any uh, Legion? More importantly, have you seen the um, the Star Wars version of MCP? Uh, well, I can't remember what it's called. I'm super excited for that one too, because Star Wars, anything Star Wars. <laughs> Just work and no you hand. Okay, we'll, we'll we'll talk about it more later. Just just remind me in Discord. Okay. He has one of the more expressive faces, even though he's only got. Half of it showing. I like that. I hope we can we can do something with that. It'll be hard with that hand in the way. We'll try and get him some semi-expressive eyes. Yeah. Okay. So that is the base coat there for the green, pretty much. And then we'll start working on, let me make sure, just make sure, one more pass. Okay. Good to go. Okay, so... Got that part done. Start working on some of the highlights. This is a crew I have been dying to get on the table. Um, I actually, me, went so far as to pre-build and base them uh, so I could play them even without paint because I knew it was going to be a while before I could paint them. And I hate playing with non-painted miniatures, but I wanted to play it so bad. I was willing to let that go. Um, I still haven't, but I had them uh, had them ready to go if the opportunity came up. <laughs> Let's see here.
Okay. So I'm just kind of working this up the side and slightly underneath. This is probably one of the more muscly um, gremlins we've worked on. I mean, he's still very small. The muscle groups are so tiny. But I want to try and capture that. Because, well, he's, you know, he's a martial arts master. He should be fairly fit, right? We're going to come around the bottom side of his arm. Not all the way across the bottom, but covering most of it. And wrap around here. Oh, dear Lord. Sorry, guys. That was my cat. Sounds like he's coughing up another cat. Take that somewhere else, cat, please. Okay. Oh, man, we totally forgot about his ears here. Look at there. Look at there. Hey, Vachil, how are you doing? Vachil, Vachil, whatever. V40, how are you doing? <laughs> I am horrible with names. I will butcher them at the first chance I get. <laughs> yeah, it's the cat. <laughs> Star of the show is here. Just uh, just address my checks to Captain Sneezy Pants because you know he's the one that that does the work. Oh, it's misspelled. <laughs> is it the car or another? Is 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 the cat? It's the cat. Um. Hey, McBluff, how are you doing? Good to see you. I'm working with a little uh, Warpstone Green here. I don't know where they got the reference for this hand position when they were doing the sculpt, but damn, they did a good job on it. That's not something you would be able to catch from like memory you literally have to have a photo reference for it and they did a good job it's not an intuitive hand position oh you play von schill oh okay that makes a little more sense now <laughs> I'm doing good, McBluff. Thank you for asking. I am happily painting some uh, some gremlins, which you guys know are near and dear to my heart, so makes me happy. Anytime I get the chance to paint them. Anything with green skin. <laughs> I don't know why. I should have played orcs. I really should have. When I was in the, that other game. But uh, yeah, I really I love my little gremlins. My Bayou. 
Um, we're going to carry that theme over next month uh, during December. We're going to be painting some uh, green in the form of the Waldo Santas. Uh, I'll be doing, I think, the one with the rug. But we might be might might do the chimney one too, just or do the chimney one instead. It just depends which one I'm feeling at the time. But we're gonna keep it festive with the festive Waldo. I'm trying to remember, first game I had. First and only game I had with Von Schell. It, it really did not go well for me. The um, rocket launcher or grenade launcher, whatever that thing was, just wrecked my face. The, the guy flipped a se severe on, uh, on the duel. And uh, the best I had was, I think a week so we were already we're, he was at a straight flip and then he flipped the red choker for damage green is best to <laughs> green like the boys yep yep yeah limo by you man i actually was kind of late to buy you i, I started with neverborn and then kind of rolled into uh guild and and now i'm 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 with the uh, more on the gremlin side, although Damien tempted me to Arcanist, so I do have uh, Damien and his crew painted up. Um, well, not his whole crew. I've got uh, Damien Unbound and a list appropriate for him painted up, but I don't have the whole keyword painted. mainly because I just time has been limited for personal painting so yeah Can I get a little definition in here? Oh, the ouch. I was, I was like, what's the ouch for? Oh, yeah, the, the Red Joker rocket launcher. Yeah, yeah, it was painful. Very painful. My my hand, I mean, I was inexperienced first and foremost, but my hand was really hating me that game. Like I said, I just, I couldn't draw for squat. Couldn't flip for squat. So, it was a, it was a pretty... Pretty lopsided game. So, okay, let me get. I did not do this. Flash kits. Ooh, we are almost out of flash kits. Let me see. I think I got some of the pot. Gotta get this transferred. <laughs> Take a little bit of our uh, moot green and some of that flash gets and mix it together. Is 
this will be our, our final highlight color. Okay. Now yeah, it's got it mostly clean. Here. <laughs> Finger eraser method doesn't work when he's very unstable. Actually, pick out the toes. We really can't. They're kind of mushy. But we'll see what we can do here. I feel like we kind of transitioned a little fast. We're going to bring it back around a wee bit more. Uh, like base color or, or primer? Primer, I use Spinal Res um, from Badger. I have uh, 32 ounce bottles of black, gray, and white. These have lasted me over a decade. Uh, <laughs> uh, or right at a decade. Um, and for the base for the base green, I used uh, Caliban. Uh, where is it? Where'd you go? No, that's not it. Well, anyways, Caliban green. There it is. That one. That's the base. But yeah, the the Stano Res is really good. Now I cannot speak personally for what their current recipe is. I got this prior to the freezing incident, which was two thousand. 15, I think um, they had an incident where all their primer froze in the warehouse and it separated and separated like permanently, like you could never reintegrate it. And it caused a huge, huge customer service influx. They ended up reformulating so it would survive freezes. So I can't, I can't say for sure how the new stuff works. The old stuff prior to that works fantastic. It works good brushed on. It works good sprayed on any which way you do it. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, I can't say how good it is now. What's up, Dragon? Was that a exclamation about the the freezing? Yeah, it was it was bad. Um, like I said, I, I love their stuff, so I'm I'm kind of 
tenderly working with those uh those leaders because you know i don't know um what the new stuff's like if i have to buy new primer and it doesn't behave like this i don't know what i'm going to do i'll have to go back on the search for you know good primer like i've been on the search for brushes um since my favorite supplier now sells junk brushes uh, i don't know what happened to broken toe but they just <laughs> in quality <laughs> Like literally this this synthetic of theirs it is a synthetic and it is broken toe but it's better than their sable brushes problem is it's just as hard and just as expensive as their sable brushes so i've got to find something else Tune that down just a wee bit here. Yeah, I didn't really tune it down, did it? Let's go a little bit darker. There we go. I do wish when I'd started doing my gremlins, I had done closer to the box art, that more yellow green that you see on their, their box art. So it's, uh, it's, it's a much closer color to this final highlight here than what I do. But I started painting them a little bit on the darker side of green. Um, and I don't really want to, change skin tones too much yeah I, I don't either i mean it is it's got the very tiny slightest hook on the tip right but i can take and stick this in hot water reshape it let it cool and it's right back being good again it's okay he's pickled i'm sure yeah <laughs> I mean, I, I could definitely make this guy a little greener, especially since they deal in poison, but. So I'd have to find the sheet, but I started uh, practicing unpacking these guys, like, you know, how I'd set them up in the deployment, how I'd set up their first turn and stuff, seeing just how much poison I could stack across the crew. And I think I got 18 on Brewmaster, like 16 on each of the uh, uh, Drunken Monks, and uh, 12 or 14 on the the whiskey golem and everybody else was like six or eight so i think i got that the poison unpacking down pat should be no shortage of poison or booze whatever you want to call it yeah that's a lot of poison <laughs> yeah um especially you know when they can use it for movement shenanigans and or avoiding damage like the drunken monks can use it to avoid damage which is really nice makes them a lot more a lot more sturdy
we want to do um do we want to do a black um gi robe whatever you call it black outfit and then like red ropes maybe kind of what i'm thinking very uh into the dragon or whatever Okay, although we could if we really wanted to do something yellow and black to look like Bruce Lee's instead of the bad guys, but I think we'll stick with the black and the red. The uh, cover art depicts it that way. Well, the black part anyways. We're working on top muscle groups here. Dude did not skip leg day. Nope, he didn't. A little, no twiggy legs here. <laughs> I am a twiggy. Nah, my, my legs are pretty beefy. Like tree trunks. Tell you, not always the easiest way to find jeans when you got legs that are like tree trunks because they expect all man pants or man to have no butt and no legs. I have plenty of both, makes it very hard to find pants. <laughs> Exactly. He has the solution, right? Yep. He does indeed. Fancy shoes. <laughs> yeah. Yep, yep. Pants are overrated. I'm only wearing pants right now because I'm on stream. <laughs> I know that's too much information for you guys, but there you go. <laughs> We're going to start building up this other leg like we did the other one. His high kick leg.
I mean, you got to give this guy credit for being able to be a, a martial arts master wearing those wooden clogs with strappy straps all over them. That does not look very conducive to uh, to keeping your footing or balance, right? So I've got to give him some uh, some huge props in that respect. Can you guys hear the cat snoring? I, I know my mic picks up a lot, but I don't know if y'all can hear that. But he is snoring like crazy. Tell that to Simon. Yeah, I don't. That's what I said. I just don't know how they do it. It's it's almost like superhuman. Not just training, but just like a skill that they have that we can't like, you know. <clears throat> It's almost, I think it's genetic that Asian people can do that squat thing while keeping their feet flat. And most uh, most Westerners uh, or Americans cannot do that. Um, so maybe it's just it's one of those things that they have uh, extra flexibility in their tendons and their feet that they can uh, um, perform on them. Yeah, the pet the, the splash is gonna be it, it's gonna take some time for me to figure out how to do that. I um I have been kind of rolling it around in my head for the last three days. Cause I'm not so much concerned about his. Um it's it's gonna be some form of liquor, you know, so it'll probably be brown, amber, uh orangey. Um similar to the colors that I'll use in shoujo. Um, but again, you know, his is not going to be near as complex as hers because it's just a, it's a splash here and a splash on, oh, hell, where'd that piece go? Um, oh, here, there. So we got splashes there. Um, they go on his back. And then we got this one behind him. So they're kind of just incidental pieces. But she is basically all liquor. So I've got to figure out how to um, how to do that effect convincingly. It's not going to be easy. <laughs> Putting your money on beer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess it, it could be beer. It's 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 hard to tell. I mean, she's she's a little more amber, a little more red. In her, she does have the nice golden amber tones to her. Um, his is a little bit lighter, so his almost does look more like beer. Um, but it's it's going to be interesting to try and figure those effects out. Um, I will probably do his off stream, and then when I come and paint Shoujo, um, we'll, we'll carry those techniques over to her. So that people can see how it's done. I don't know. We'll, we'll just have to see how it works. <laughs> I hate to be evasive, but I'm just not quite sure yet. Oops, I got a little crazy there. Went around the side of the knee. Actually, that doesn't look half bad. It's better than that a little bit.
Now this is just some moot green here we're pulling in. Okay. I'm back on that boot green. tip of that muscle there. I feel like I should put just a little bit more highlighting on the underneath here. Um, yeah, it's in shadow, but this leg's lift, lifted up, so it's going to get a little bit more light in there. Ooh, we're on the cloth. That's why I couldn't see it. Starting to develop that hook in my brush again I was talking about. But that's okay. It kind of comes in handy when it does that because you can get around corners a little bit. You just have to be aware of where the hook is in order to utilize it. Hey, Space New. <laughs> that is your man, Brewmaster 2, man. I'm glad you ha showed up. I feared you might if I posted uh, that picture of that notification with Brewmaster in there. You might pop in. How are you doing? Space New is one of the, the locals here where I live, and I've been... It introduced to uh, Malifo and uh, Brewmaster is the crew he chose to go with first. By you in general, but Brewmaster first. Still need to get you a, still need to get a game with you. Or Matt. <laughs> Anybody. Just need life to quit kicking me in the teeth so I get up there. <laughs> we all we all have that one that got us in the game. Mine mine was uh mine was Dreamer and Chompy Bits. Um but I really I really dig uh the bite. That was 
I just, I love the comedic nature of most of their stuff. Um, this one's probably one of the more serious. <laughs> of the, um, but yeah, I just, I love the, the funny little green skins. Yeah, yeah. That little kneecap's being a bumblehead. This area here. There we go. That's about where I wanted it now. I think we're getting back to where it is. Ooh. Um, yeah, we just need to get them playing at the shop. So we can potentially draw more people in. I was there, you know, every week for like five weeks straight, but I just never seemed to gain any traction because the shop owner wasn't able to get all the product in. When people want it and i think that that hurt but now that he's got direct order signed up it should be a lot easier i just unfortunately have not been able to come up there as often as i'd like to what is that wrong with that little piece uh, one is, uh, doing Perdita and one is doing, uh, Mama Z and, or, and, or Lucius. And, uh, I don't know who the other two are, but I know two of those four that he speaks about. Oh, okay. Yeah, well. The Lady J one, I got into it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. That'd be nice. Get a little bit of Arcanist action there. Although I think uh, I think Matt's wanting to pick up uh, want to pick up Hoffman next. He, uh, he asked about the sale. He's like, well, those, uh, those Hoffman uh, alternate models be available at sale? I said, I think so. <laughs> he did order Yuko? Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> One model pulled him into a keyword. How about that? Yeah, well, he, he hasn't even gotten Hoffman yet. He's just, he was asking about it. But uh, Space New there gave uh, gave him the uh, the Yuko uh, title bot model from this uh, from this kit here, which I absolutely love the sculpt. I haven't really paid a whole lot of attention to uh, her play style yet because I, I don't play Yuko. Um but the model is just beautiful. Like I, I want to paint it and I want to paint it like a base it up. Like she's sliding down one of the tiled rooftops in an Asian village. That's, that's how I want to paint her up. Tactile is best. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, you'd go into Jack doll. Huh? You have to, have to play on tabletop sim with me one day. Let's 
since we are, uh, well, I mean, we could actually play in person, I guess. I forget you're local or relatively local. Maybe meet up at a uh, Gigabytes one day if I ever get my buttocks down there. <laughs> you ordered Misaki? Nice. You got the new sculpt. I'll show you. I don't know if you've seen her old one. This was her old sculpt. Balanced on tiptoe with a big swoosh there and her uh, pike across her back. I don't know which one I like better. I kind of like the new one, but I kind of like the old one too. So it's like, I don't know which one I'd, re I'd use. <laughs> I can do that. Um, well, I'm and I both have a uh, have Jack doll, so would not be a problem. Although I don't have the um, oh god, what are they called? The uh, dead outlaws. I think they work with is that him. It seems like it's him. I could be wrong. No, it's hanged and drowned. That's it. And I do have drowned painted. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. It is Dead Outlaws. I was thinking the Dead Outlaws were, were with Jack for some reason, but I was like, those are not painted. So, I wouldn't be able to bring those. And I, I don't know about better paint it. That was a speed paint. I did the whole crew in one stream. So I don't know about better painting on those. <laughs> well... Hmm. Let's see real quick. Do I have pictures? Oh god, those are really nice. The ones bot bot back T posted today. Um, let's see here. Let's see if I have them real quick. I won't spend too long. I just wanted to see if I had them handy. If I do, they're not in a photo album. So we're not going to be able to find them, find them quick. So, <laughs> but yeah, I did paint them. Played several games since the last time. I cannot get my head around poison. I can punch play objective, but I can only ah. <laughs> well, that is that's something I sat there and worked with for like uh, three or four evenings. Just played around with unpacking. Uh, I was talking about it earlier uh, in the stream that I would. I, I sat there and practiced it and I was able to get out like um, 18 poison to a uh, brewmaster and like 14 or 16 to each of my, uh, my fermented monks and 12 or so to the whiskey golem. And I think it was 10 or so to Shoujo. So, but is there's a process to it. Um, and basically only one way to get the, the maximum efficiency. And you have to be in a certain position to do so. Um, essentially, I mean, you're bubbling up, right? But you have to be bubbled up in a certain way so that things can get in between.
Um, I'm not sure what you mean by dog pond. If you mean like clustering up or bubbling up, yeah. But I did it long before I ever got in contact with anybody. First turn unpack is what I'm doing. <laughs> no dogs in tri <laughs> No, no dogs in there. Whiskey gammon are kind of like dogs. Kind of. <laughs> Small, loyal, and and zoomy around the board kind of thing. That's all I was thinking. Not going for literal here. Sorry, I kind of was off screen there, wasn't I? <laughs> Canine remains. That's the only one you associate with poison. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Mm. I'll sh real quick show you guys my my whiskey gammons. I don't have the uh, I don't have the box yet. <clears throat> so I was making do. There's my whiskey gammon. I um I have some 3D printed eyes and arms and a wheel that i've not put on yet but this is going to be my whiskey gammon for right now which is a 3d printed whiskey barrel because <laughs> i've just not gotten around to getting the box yet when i do i'll have the proper one but for right now that's gonna be my whiskey gammon You don't plan? You got what you like? Well, I mean, the Whiskey Gammon are pretty handy. Um, especially if you have a strat scheme that's a little bit more spread out because they are pretty quick. Um, so, I mean, there's reason to get models just, be just beyond what you like. I get it. Rule of cool is definitely more important, but sometimes if you want to pay, pay uh, competitively. Um, you get the ones that you're not as fond of just because they, they serve a role better.
going to be real. I'll never play this for more than fun. Okay, well, you know, that's good then. I mean, I, I'm not talking about like competitive tournaments because I'll never do that either. Um, but I'm just saying competitive at, at local, you know, tables. I, I like to win, but I'm not driven by it. But I won't handicap myself just because I don't like a model. There you go. All different kinds of gamers. Okay. Getting that there. Whew. Guys, just so many little bitty tiny muscle groups. Just nutty. I mean, we, we had, um, when I was in, when I played 40K, we had people that were fluffy players. You know, they would only play a fluffy list and not, you know, the, the, the Death Stars that everybody was building. Um, I wasn't really one of those because I was, I was just never, I was a not a lore person. Still not really a lore person, but I have been working my way through Malifa lore because it's a lot more interesting to me than the 40k stuff. Oh shit. Whoa. Sorry about that. Um, we're still in focus. Okay, good. Wow. I just hit the crap on the camera. No, I did play, I did play a kind of fluffy army because Emperor's son, or Emperor's sons, Emperor's children, Slanesh has never been strong in the game. Never will be strong in the game, but I played it because that was what got me into 40k. And I loved the noise marines. That was, that was what brought me in. Love the idea of the sonic weaponry. Very kind of brought me back to Dune and stuff like that. So I played played Slanesh themed armies. So and of course <laughs> never won a game. <laughs> it's sad the the way to play my gremlin faction is with the max of three gremlins. Oh yeah. Is there anybody that breaks that? Like, does Summer break that uh, llama? Because he, he's a big summoner. And uh, doesn't he bring in a uh, Malifaux Gremlins? Greater than three number? Or could I, am, am, I, am I wrong? Hmm. 
Okay. Almost done with this leg. We're getting there. I don't think Llama heard me. Oh, if you're around, is there anything that breaks the, the rule of three gremlins? Like Summer? Summer and his summoning? Foot needs a little bit more cleaning up here. I think this is the most time I've taken painting skin in quite some time. Apologies for that. We're just, uh, Trying to get her where I want her. And like I said, it's, it's, these muscle groups are so small, maintaining definition in them is it's a challenge. Really enjoying playing the game. Been playing for a few days. Nice. Fantastic. Yeah, now Llama here actually has a hexagonal play map so that you can play three versus three and still have the deployment zones and set up every uh, correct way. It's a lot easier with four or two because of, you know, equality on the, the deployment zones. Um, but yeah, it's wild that you're already trying to do the three-way, three, three, three-way thing with the games. Oop, pardon me. We uh we played that. Who? Sometime beginning of this year, I think. Uh, Llama and Ed and I uh, played a, a three three-way game. Yeah, he brought Hamlin. I brought Reva. And uh Lama brought I wanna say Yedza. A little wonky, but works better than some of the three-player modes we have at shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I understand. And that's that's what was the beginning of uh, Llama's thing was so that the third the third wheel could be included. <laughs>
So maybe uh, if you want to try printing it out, I um, I have the PDF if if I'm as cool with it, I can send it send you, and you can try that out, see if it helps. Oh, I was I was just saying if if Lama's okay with it, I can send you that file and you can print the the three way um, hex map out and give that a swing. See if that helps a little better. It's not like graphically intensive or anything, um, so you could just print the the sheets out, um, one hundred percent, tape them together, and then you'd have kind of a, a three way deployment zone set up. What are your what are your free times now? Are you free on the weekends? I know for a while there you were like booked every weekend with work. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Okay. Oh, of course. So it's like one day at the shop and then the two that is off or closed. Okay. That makes sense why you're doing more of it at home. Um, well, I can certainly try and make it to the shop Sunday. Um, Not sure when you'll be there. Okay. Well, I'm having to take care of uh, extra horses this week and next. Well, for the next four weeks. Um, so my my afternoons are a little screwed too. Um, but yeah, send me a message and maybe maybe we can meet up for a game Sunday. If not, maybe. Uh, you can play a home game if you want to. Get a little bit of this darker green here. Not super dark, but... Alrighty, man. Take it easy. Hope to see you again soon. Always good to see a local here.
A little bit of water there that's slightly thinned. There we go. That's what I was after. Kind of glaze it in just a wee little bit. I keep going out of frame. Hang on, let me push this model back just, or camera back just a wee bit. Okay. <laughs> Drink some Coca-Cola and you'll see. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Now, like low caffeine sources, or what I call low caffeine sources, don't really bother me. But like uh, coffee or or uh, black tea or something like that, those would put me out in a heartbeat. Um, Jolt Colas or whatever, those that have excessive amounts of caffeine, those would knock me out. Um, but just like a regular Coke or Dr. Pepper or whatever doesn't really phase me. I've gotten used to those. A close-up show? Am, am I not doing it close enough up? Yeah, that's about as close as we can get. Oop, oop. Maybe a little bit further back. Yeah, there we go. Work for you. Thank you. I do feel like I need to pull a bit more of my. My yellow green into this arm, though, I feel like it's a little muted compared to the leg. So, pull some of that into the brighter, sharper points like the elbow here. In the beginning of this. And of course, the, the wrist bone. Thumb bone for better, lack of a better word. <laughs> I love gremlins, but whew, they can be a challenge to paint. They're so small. Right? Absolutely. T90. So, wow, I'm really sorry how long this has taken on the skin. We're just having to do a lot of back and forth with it to get it to where I want it. Um, normally, normally progress a lot quicker on minis.
Uh, I think once we get that uh, the strap built in there on the, the sandal, this leg will be okay. It looks a little soft right now, but we've got spots where the, the strap comes across the leg, and I think once those are defined, it'll be okay. Um, a little bit more blending right here. Like we jump pretty, pretty aggressively in colors at this spot. Go where I'm wanting now. We have to come back and get a little bit more on this uh, underside here. Don't you see how much that moved with just me blowing on it to dry a spot? Crazy. <laughs> how flexible that is. Okay. We'll come back in here with a little bit of that bright green. Attach the tip tops of these ears here. All right. Let's see here. Get a little bit, not the brightest green, but the next brightest down here on that. I don't know if this, it's not the quad. This muscle here on the thigh. I'm going to call it the groin muscle because it's pretty close to that. <laughs> Just a little definition there. Now we'll work on the face. Hey, Dead Aussie Gamer. How are you doing? Welcome in. I appreciate that very much. Thank you. How are you doing? I am sorry. I have not caught any streams lately. I have been a bad stream friend. But it has been crazy busy lately. And unfortunately, only going to get busier because holidays. <laughs> I'll try to make a point in seeing you. Okay. 
have you been doing any uh, Through the Breach uh, episodes lately? So I need to go check the VODs. Mm -hmm. Want that dry, flaky paint mixed in with the good stuff. Nope. Okay. You know what? You know what? We need the bug glasses. Because I can't see those glass well enough. So, one second. <clears throat> These are the bug glasses. I don't know why I call them that, but it kind of looks like the mandible of a bug hanging down. That's what we call them. Okay, and uh, then we'll finish up that face. Okay. And just a touch more of this neon yellow here. On a hairy crease of these brows. And tip of the nose here. Just a little bit. Okay, and just a touch more here. This is just plain boot, boot green. Let's see if I really hard to get on that right hand side. I'm trying to find the best way to attack it and keep it on camera too. Because uh, yeah. not easy to get to. Okay. Got that there. Do a little bit of highlight in here. Okay. 
And we're about ready to uh, start on the cloak. Since we've spent an hour and 30 minutes on the skin. Good googly. <laughs> well. Well. Okay. Going to start with some some black. Now, typically, if you're doing a painting, you don't want to do pure black, but I'm just, I'm kind of old school. It's hard to get past it. I almost always start with pure black. Um, but supposedly, I don't think I like this brush. We're going to go back to the other one in a second. Um, supposedly, there is no real black. There's red tinted black and green tinted black and blue tinted black and purple tinted black and you're supposed to use those yeah well <laughs> if i ever get around to painting a golden demon or something i might but uh yeah for right now we're just doing this stuff although if i were to paint a colored black i would probably use um do i have it handy I don't see it out where I can reach it. Um, but I'd probably use uh, I'd probably use uh, Nightshade Purple from MSP because it is a very, very black purple. Like super duper black. Um, can I hardly tell there's any purple in it. Um, and that would probably be the one I'd use if I were going to go with a colored black. Um, instead of something that's perceived as pure black. And I'm going to be honest, I probably should have painted these ears after we did the highlighting of the black. So we'll, you'll probably see me come back and repaint those ears again. So <laughs> they're only painted right now for uh, viewing's pleasure. Because <laughs> they're probably going to get hit by a, a black highlight or two before I'm done. Just saying. We want to do a a red mask. You do a red mask. Bring a little bit of color to the face, even though it's uh, and it'd be you know could contrast, of course, because it's red and green. Um, and I think we could do it without looking like a Christmas tree, right? Because that's always the danger with a uh, red and green is that you look like a Christmas tree. And I think we could do it on this because you know it's a mask. It's a relatively small piece. I thought you said dang for a second, then I realized it was D-A-G. <laughs> yeah. Had a real quick ninja visit, I think.
I'm so afraid this guy's going to snap off that damn bamboo stick. So scared of that. Thank you make bluff i appreciate that uh, i i um i really like painting green um these guys are a particular challenge just because they're so small the muscle groups are so small so i mean you're you're painting transitions on muscle groups that are a millimeter across and that's not easy to do they tend to look a lot patchier now i could probably do like one color and do some glazes and start dragging down the glazing. Um, it requires a precision brush in this particular case that I don't have. So I just haven't been doing that. And I think that this ankle is one of those areas that could use some work. Um, just looking at it just now from this angle, I was like, hmm, that is a, that's a little splotchy there. Let's work that up a little bit. I kind of looked in here to re-see this area. Hey, we're back on skin though. I was just getting to the other stuff. That's a little bit better now. Ooh, you know, that might have been a little blue, but I didn't paint his neck green. So I don't know if it's mask or if it's like a, like the hood would be up underneath the chin. I want to say it's one of those that goes up underneath the chin since I did not paint that area green. And I'm not going to start now. <laughs> no one's going to see it anyways unless they're like looking underneath the model. But I didn't even think about his throat being shown uh, around the mask. still on the screen we are just making sure i just realized there's a whole bunch of gray on the back of this arm we'll come in and fill that in with some uh some of our good old green the base green because uh it's just on the back side it shouldn't be highlighted or anything like that but it definitely looks funny seeing this black go down around it. Yeah, yeah. More artistic work in the works when you get that lore correct.
more fuel for the creative fires. See what I did there? Alpha burns and creative fires. <laughs> Do I even have to have? Yeah, right. Yep. I'm I'm looking forward to that. I've got so much other lore to catch up on. The book really isn't uh, a huge draw to me yet because I'm still, you know, like on episode twenty of the Breach Side broadcast. So I've got a long way to go before I'm even close to caught up to a. Uh, Burning Man. Long way to go. I wish I could, I wish I was one of those that could listen to podcasts and paint. I literally paint in silence. No music, no TV, nothing. Um, because if I have those going, I will get distracted by them. So like, if I'm listening to a podcast, I either have to listen to it and not do anything else, or I don't remember what happened. So, like, I could listen to 20 episodes of it and say, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm on episode 20 of Breach Side Broadcast. Well, what was it about? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> or, you know, I can tell you what it's about, but not get any painting done. So I just, I cannot, for some reason, the audio processor in my brain does not multitask. I can multitask other things, like I can do two or three projects at once. But when it involves the audio processor, I cannot multitask. I think it, it may have something to do with how acute my hearing is. Um... I don't know. Although I got to admit, my hearing is finally starting to come down to, quote, normal levels. I no longer hear a mouse fart three rooms over, which is kind of a blessing. Uh, <laughs> and the, I don't get as much uh, noise from TVs anymore. Um but really and truly, by all accounts, I probably should be damn near deaf um, because I worked in, in high SPL vehicles for so long. This is one that I really probably could have done some sub-assembly on so I could get up around that mask easier, around that face. But I also was like, oh, man, if I do that, then I want to muck up the paint when I'm assembling it. So I just assembled it. I've gotten to where I do that with 90% of my Malifa miniatures. I'll leave a piece off or two maybe if i can if i can get away with it like his backpack his little bottles i left that off because that was relatively easy to slot in after assembly and i figured that won't be a problem but like some of most of them they're just they're so fiddly you're going to be sitting there test fitting trying to get it to go in place and you're going to muck up the paint so just just assemble it and paint it fully Which is, that's quite a change for me. Because like I said, when I was in the the uh, painting of Warhammer models, I sub-assembled the crap out of everything. Because, you know, everything was indexed and keyed and went together only one way. Um, and, of course, you know, very, very clear instructions. So you really didn't have to worry about getting it assembled after painting. Um, they've changed it up a little bit. Most of their miniatures are now... Uh, what they call mono pose, so they only 
they go together like you know they'll have two halves of a torso like vertically so you're smashing one leg on one piece and one leg on the other piece and the torso in half and you're kind of smashing them together and layering a couple pieces in between so they're a lot less easy to do that with now um, but back in the day they were all about the the uh the sub assemblies Sure, I got that sleeve there without getting on the green. How can you do that? Oh, nope, 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 not that way. I think that did it. Yeah, okay. Whew. Whew. Close, close call. <laughs> That's a pretty impressive result, uh, Weird Hobby. I just looked at your uh, your 15-minute uh, brewmaster. <laughs> That's pretty dang awesome. Yeah, yeah. I may have to get more more practice in doing that. I, I've I've always been, you know, base shade layer highlight, you know. Never felt like I had the the control with the uh the the speed paints or contrast paints or whatever. Um but I may have to may have to put some time into it. It's it's a different painting technique. It still requires some control. You can't just slap stuff down. Um, so, I'll just give it a swing, give it some tries. Once I get some time to work on my own stuff, <laughs> we can experiment again. Uh, just, just ask which weird hobby just to, to share it to you on Discord if they're willing.
Okay. Wrapping it around that leg. I'm trying to get it on the pretty green stuff. Woo, that's way too much paint. Way too much paint. And we're kicking our camera again, because why not? We don't like our camera, apparently. Damn. There we go. Took me a sec to find my spot. The one not, one bad thing about these bug glasses. They add a little distortion to everything. So sometimes where you think you're putting your brush isn't exactly where you're putting your brush until you actually land on a landmark. Yeah. So bear that in mind if you ever get any of these. Magnification is great, but uh, it can be a pain too. Uh... Do I happen to see the speed paint a McMorning piece from Waba? I did not want, I mean, I, rem, I remember the original piece, um, but I have not watched the speed paint because uh, I um, I actually got in and got on uh, VOD Ninja as quick as I could today because last time I streamed, we had some problems with echoing. And I wanted to make sure that we had uh, plenty of time to work out any bugs. So uh, I didn't do any surfing or anything like that before stream. I just jumped in and, and got a ninja and was ready to go. Yeah, I mean those those I always have fun watching those. I like I love the the one they did uh they did for Vagrant Song of the Curse Bearer. Uh they showed that one yesterday, I think it was. I just I loved it. I thought that was so cool watching the that being done in a speed paint. I need to get back to uh to uh Blender and start seeing about making those uh those miniatures for it because that is one of my one of my back burner projects is making miniatures for a vagrant song for personal use <laughs> I mean the standees are cool and all but I, I want miniatures In desperate need of an art of weird book with some of the early skin. Yeah, that would actually be really cool. A history of the artwork of, of weird or, or Malifaux or something like that and show all the initial concept sketches and revisions and stuff as they went through. I, I think I would, I'd buy the hell out of that book. Yeah. Just saying Christmas wish list, uh, weird hobbies. <laughs> that would be really, really neat. Uh, get up in there. I was hoping we might see old Doug Rooney today, but I think he's uh he's wrapped up in his new Kickstarter. 
he's he got going. He's going to be a busy, busy boy for the next few months. see here Just a little bit more around this i don't want to get in that hole where the piece glues in but i want to make sure all the little near near areas are covered all right here we go. so we got that in there go ahead and get uh get this mask done before we go any further <laughs> yeah no doubt like i said that that would be a fantastic thing i mean because that was one of most, my most cherished books when I was a kid was the art of Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi. They had all the, you know, concept sketches from the original, you know, think tank where they sat down and started throwing the ideas around. And some of them were just wildly different from what we got. Most of them are, you know, kind of in those, the kind of, you know, recognizable format, but <laughs> what a very editor to you. Uh, did did you see the the previous conversation, Llama? McBluff and I want to see a art of, or you know the original concept sketches behind uh, Malifo products, like evolution of. Malifo from the heads of the creators till the, the finished product kind of thing. Hey, Virick. <laughs> Don't spill it. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that would just be, that would be awesome. Like I said, it was, that was one of my most cherished books. Was that one? And I would love to see one from uh, from Weird, because it would sit right up there next to those uh, Star Wars art books. That would be the kind of uh, place it would have in my heart. Oh, we missed just a wee bit of black down there. That's okay. We'll fix it later. Mama, we're doing a Defias mask here. I figure you'd like that from uh, your World of Warcraft. Defias Bandit. He'd take a novel or six. Oh, yeah, novels would be great too, but I would just, I would love to see an art book. Like I said, from, you know, the initial concept sketches to kind of finished finish product, that would just be really cool. Oh, yeah, 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 Varric, I was... I would have loved to see plastic cards of the, the iconic. I love the design, but the the card stop was just a little. Eh. <laughs> oh, you had the old one. Oh, okay. Well, I, I got the newer one, the reprint or whatever, but it's still it's still uh, kind of poor card quality. Like I said, the designs are beautiful, um, but it's just not as as dirty as the plasticized cards. So I would like to see that. Yeah, exactly. It shuffles better. It holds up better. Like the first time I shuffled it, I dog-eared two of the cards, right? So it just kind of bumped me. So it's it's in the it's in the display shelf to look pretty, but it won't see any table time. Yeah. Now, my favorite, I think, is uh, 
I use it 99% of the time as a, uh, the curiosity uh, deck, the one that has, or no, Twisted Fate deck. Sorry, Twisted Fate deck. That's my favorite. Um, and the next favorite um, is probably the Duality deck. I really like that one. And I have a, I have a retro deck as well, which is nice. I love the look of it, but because it's kind of a collector's item, like it would cost me a lot to replace, I, it doesn't see much play. <laughs> Do some whispering. <laughs> Eh. Sorry, guys. Let me see if I can get that in there. There we go. Oh, damn it. I knew that was going to happen right on my beautiful green. I have to. Fix that up. The good thing is, we erased most of it. While well, it was still wet. Just a tiny little correction. There on the bottom, and it'll be good to go. <laughs> Probably shouldn't even bother, bother with it right now until I finish the mask, and then we'll worry about it. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Gonna try and finish that mask up without painting all over his arm again. Let's see if I can get in position. Mostly got it there. Come around a little bit this way and catch it. Okay. So we still got to do the uh, the highlights and stuff on the mask. So we're not going to we're not going to touch up the arm just yet because there wouldn't be any sense in it, right? We're very likely to draw right the hell back over it. <laughs> Uh, just looking through the wall this week, I, I hope to be able to get the alt Barbaros and something tells me I won't be the only one. Nice. Yeah, that's a pretty cool model. I like that one. I um, I have the original one um, that came in the Mother of Monsters box. Um, but he definitely needs a card update. <laughs> Is, is this ferocious one that you keep mentioning, is that the actual, is that the Barbara's model alt? Okay, you got you got me doing it now. I got to go look at it real quick. That's twice you've said that. I got to go see. Oh, it's like alt Groot slang. <sighs> Oh man. I'll be. I actually really would like that alt guild steward. Um 
And I definitely need to get Miz's fancy pants now. The we what uh, Winona Finnegan. Definitely gotta pick up her. Cause I have painted Mr. Fancy Pants and now I gotta paint Miz's fancy pants. <laughs> That was actually the Alt Finnegan or the regular Finnegan was actually one of my favorite models. I think as far as like just execution and basing, I just, I don't know. He just felt really put together. Sometimes I'm not really, not really big on my basing. And, uh, you know, this model just never feels quite right because the basic's not there. And he, yeah, he kind of looks out of place out there in the, on the railroad with the, the cactus and stuff. But I don't know, kind of comes together. Railroad syndicate tycoon kind of thing. Um, but yeah. He's also the one of the first models I did a hair stubble on. So that was new too. Will Alt Group saying have a two inch melee reach, please? Or is he still going to have that one inch? Okay. Now, let's go back in and touch up our uh, black around that hood. And then we'll touch up that little bit of a uh, little tiny bit of green that we boo-booed up. Keep hitting that bamboo stick, causing problems. go all right got his mask done gonna start working on that black get our black paints out we got um dark gray black gray or gray black black gray um, intermediate blue. Here's our other ones. I think that'll work. So we're gonna do uh, black gray, dark gray, and eclipse gray. Now you could probably do blues if you wanted to, you know, some uh, some black blues if you were interested in doing that. Black is one of those things you can kind of tint any color. Um, we'll just do the standard grays though. Mm. 
Hey, Pencil. How are you doing? Assembling daydreams right now. Fantastic. Let's see if I can see these in the, the light real quick. Make sure I'm getting them in the right order. Actually. Hmm. Sit here. All right. Sorry, I just wanted to see it underneath the light. Ooh, we got a blur cam. Actually, I think the cam froze. Oh, no, there it is. Thank you. Okay, so we're just going to basically hit all the high areas here on this, with this uh, black gray, and then we'll start working up some of the others. Now, are you assembling uh, old school daydreams or new school daydreams? Like 2E daydreams or the new ones? I like the two E ones, the, the more cartoony ones. They make me happy. Make my opponent sad. Make me happy. <laughs> Stitch together. Nice. I've got the... Uh, I got the original Oogie Boogie ones, and I also have the uh, the little uh, teddy bear style ones. These little guys. I got to get around to finishing them. I love these little ones. I mean, they're just perfect. The deep sleep box. Okay. That's the that's a three E one, I think. Yeah. Okay. The three titties are somewhere here. <laughs> you mean like a uh, the three different versions of Teddy, like the Misery, um, the, I don't know, was it 1E, that big, tall metal monster stretched out that looked terrifying? I would not mind having a Misery. I hadn't gotten around to buying one. Um I, mean, I put a I put a good bit of time and effort into my standard Teddy. I didn't feel like I really wanted to buy the Misery one because I feel I had to put a lot of time and effort into that one, and then I won't use my other. So. barely together.
Man, I forgot just how shiny this stuff is. It's unusual for a, for a Vallejo color to be so shiny. Very, very glossy. But that's okay. I'll tone it down a later. This is a hint you probably won't get many places, but when you work with blacks and dark grays, I highly, highly recommend using distilled water for any thinning or brush cleaning. And the reason behind that is, for some reason, the minerals in your uh, tap water, or at least here in the States, your tap water, will cause all sorts of weird uh pooling and tidal effects and stuff like that on your uh on your black it is like stain the black in ways that you don't want to so just a helpful hint if you're painting blacks and grays or dark, blacks and dark grays to use distilled water for both your rinse and your wet palette or any thinning that you're doing Something that took me a while to figure out. What is causing these weird stains? I thought they had one. I mean, they have to have some sort of distribution node there, don't they? Weird Hobbies, are you around? I need to do it, but I need a quick, quick restroom break.
Ooh, 60, 60 euros. Ooh, 60 euros for a travel port authority. That's horrible. Mm. Well, you know, I used to, used to play a lot of games that came from overseas. And I had to pay those kind of prices for them. So, unfortunate thing, what we do for games we like. <clears throat> Thank you, McBluff. How are you doing? All right. So, we got our first black knocked in. I'm going to come in here and refine that on the side there of the hood a little bit. Good, good, good. Glad to hear it. The ferocious purse. <laughs> You're really on that model, aren't you? <laughs> it is pretty. <laughs> My only problem is just, you know, I love the alt bottles, but I want to put them in the crew. And you can't put, I feel like I can't put them in my crew because they don't match anything else. Like, I love the Lady J set, the, the, the new uh, Candy Skull set, because it's almost complete. Like, almost all the models are covered by the alternate sculpts. Um only one is the Judge and the Domadores, I think. And the Domadores fit in anyways. So you really only have to worry about the Judge and I think uh, Guild Steward, maybe? I mean, not that's not really a keyword, but it's a model you take with her a lot. So um, I like that one because that one's almost entirely complete with the, uh, with the alternate sculpts. But I see more and more people interested in Malfoy and Jeremy. Yeah, well, that's good. I mean, I'm glad to hear that. Um, and if, who knows if the, the man's there, maybe it can happen. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Ooh. A gauntlet has been thrown down. <laughs> Probably not the way you intended it, but that's the way I took it. The glove's been thrown. <laughs> Gone for <more> fuzzy mitten. <laughs> well. Okay, sounds a little more like a fuzzy mitten then. <laughs> I think it's about time to replace my parchment for my uh, for my paper, whatever you want to call it, for my, my wet palette. I'm starting to get these little bits and bobs in the paint. When the surface starts to deteriorate, it starts uh, depositing little pieces in the paint, so... Oops, I think it's time to replace. But we didn't think about that while going to the restroom. Should have looked into it beforehand. It'll probably take it too long.
<laughs> Fuzzy mint with pom poms. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. Mm. You know, I didn't even notice there is a mesh on that gourd, like a like a net for carrying. Holy crap, did not even see that until just now. One of the things about Malifaux miniatures, you almost have to double, triple, and quadruple check when you're starting to paint to see if you've got all the details that are present. Because more than likely, you're going to miss one or two in, on the initial pass. And like I said, for, for flexibility purposes, this bamboo should be green. Because that's when it's more flexible. But um, I didn't want to put green next to green skin. So what we may do is do some like green tint like up around each of these sections where they, they it kind of uh, comes to that little knot. We'll just put a little green wash in there or green glaze. Just so it has a little bit of... of um, greenness to it but not too much we don't want to detract from the skin yes it's always and that camera is going to show everyone to you yes yeah 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 that is the unfortunate problem with those digital cameras they are very telling <laughs> especially when you have a a nice dslr it points out every little flaw. I can't tell you the number of times I've taken pictures of a model thinking it's done. Pull it up to crop it and I'm like, oh God, I missed that spot entirely. Oh God, there's a fleck there. There's a speckle there. Oh my God. And immediately go pull the pull the bottle off the paint stands, fix that little bit. Go back, pull it back in for photos. Oh, God, there's another one. There's another one. <laughs> yep. Uh, cat, you know, cat hair is not as much of an issue as you would think it would be in my household. Um, I really don't have a lot unless a model sits around for ages. I don't know why, but I think his fur is really heavy. It will collect, like around the baseboard, like where you have your molding. It collects down here in that little crumb, uh, groove between the the wall or the base plate and the uh, the flooring. So you get this little gray line <laughs> on the walls that you had to get the 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 uh, vacuum stick into. Um, but as far as like just like floating in clouds, it really doesn't. I like I said, I think his fur is really heavy or something. So I don't have to deal with that as much, which is nice. We got on the tangent there, didn't we, with the the uh, the cat here?
So is anybody else doing some hobbying today? Or planning to tonight? I'm probably going to be, if I do any hobby in tonight, it will probably be on working out the alcohol effects on this model so that Shoujo will be uh, capable of being finished. <laughs> um, Gonna do some serious resource gathering in game. There's a top resource that I was a little late on getting to, so gonna get some harvesters down on it and hope to pull a hundred thousand or two units out of it. You'll not be hobby until the weekend. Well, that's good. Putting the finishing touches on Clipsa. Nice. Clipsa was a fun model. I mean. I enjoyed it. Uh, the assembly. Ooh, the assembly was not so much. That one was, I was glad I did some pre-assembly practice with that one. <laughs> you put those legs in, or you put the body half together before the legs. Oof, you were in trouble. <laughs> Mine, I, I, I made it a little too clean. I feel like I should have gone in and made it uh, grimier, done some rust effects and stuff. I think that would have made it really pop. Um, so it's a little kind of like hindsight thing. I wish I'd done a little more weathering on mine. Back in with our lighter gray now. Thought about the weathering, but in the end decided it went clean. Yeah, yeah. I I did uh I did more non-metallic metal because you know, why not? <laughs> I did the kind of coppery tanks on the top and uh kind of a bluish gray white metal. Let me see here. There's my EVS folder. Oops. There he is. See, he's just, he's too clean. Did the non-metallic metal around the, the bands and stuff on the legs. So yeah, I mean he just he looks too clean. I should have should have rusted him up and done some drips and drains and stuff like that. Maybe 
put some uh, texture paste on there to make look like barnacles or something. But eh, hindsight's always twenty twenty. I, I tend to paint really clean. Like weathering is is a whole new thing to me. I, I don't do it a whole lot. Like it was something when I when I played forty k that a lot of the people gave me fits for that my stuff looked too clean, especially, you know, chaos that would be old, um, you know, 10,000 years old or stuff, whatever. Um, I was like, yeah, I don't care. This, I, I paint clean. I don't like the, the grim dark look. It's just not me. <laughs> she goes in the water for the first time in the ES, but oh, okay. Oh, it's a brand new experimental model. Okay. All right. Well, that makes me feel a little bit better then. That makes me feel better. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, I don't know. I just always like that kind of clean, crisp, almost like comic book style. Um, so, yeah. Not to say I can't do it. I have done it. It's just I, I always feel like I feel like it's backstepping, right? Because you do all the work to make the paint look nice and then you go and put some weathering pigment on there and screw it all up. And it's like, why did I do this hard work to make the paint look good just to screw it up with weathering? Now, some cases, I get it, you got to, like, you know, if you're doing uh, historical models, right, you've got to do a little weathering here and there, depending on what you're painting. Um, but I feel like a lot of people, especially in that, that, that community that I talked about before, use weathering as a crutch. Painting wasn't so good, so we just covered up with a lot of rust or a lot of pigment or whatever. Boom, dirty old looking model doesn't take a you know genius to paint kind of thing. I feel like I'm doing such a nice job and just yeah, yeah, that's that's basically the way I felt, Panda. Yep, yep, pretty much. I've gotten away from that line of thinking, but that used to be the way I thought about pigment or you know, weathering as it was just a crutch. Took seeing some really fantastic weathering jobs from painters to change that that thinking. But yeah. Emma, naturally. You should weather your beer. Um, it, it depends. I really, I think this is my last stream this month and I want to do the Waldo next month because it's, you know, Christmas, uh, Christmas holiday. So I'm probably going to do the Waldo for the two streams over December. Um, so I'll either come back to this in January or we'll finish up the beer off stream. And then when I get done with the, uh, the iconic, in the first part of next year, uh, then we'll come back to them. Yeah, yeah, exactly, Pandy. Panda, I agree.
Guys, can y'all hear the cat snoring? He's back at it. Like a chainsaw. Honestly, starting to worry if the cat has like a DV deceptive or something. He snores and makes such weird noises. You see having to pay for a deviated septum repair on a cat? Oh, dear God. <laughs> that would be horrible. I'd have to pick up pet insurance. Honestly, probably should do that anyways. I know uh, one of my friends actually has cat or pet insurance for his cats because one of his cats has cancer. And the chemotherapy treatments for it are almost as expensive as they are for humans. And he couldn't afford them without the, uh, without the insurance. Probably going to work with some resin and see what I can do with that. Nice. Yeah. Resin is something I have just recently gotten into. Uh, I did it with those EBS models, Ford Resin. Resin pour water bases. And um, for my first attempt, I think they turned out really good. Um, the hard part is going to be matching uh, a model to those because I've, I've got Maxine 2 over here that's going to go with those models. And I've got to try and match the amount of tinting in the resin um, for her base. And that's going to be kind of hard to do. Then I got this uh, tentacle base here. That will have a resin pour up to about there. So just above the explosion of dirt there. Um, so, and because it's not going to be a whole lot of water, honestly, the, the mold, the inner center portion takes care of most of it. Um, but because it's kind of got that overhang, it's going to be darkened. Not as much light will get down, which means I'm going to have to lighten up on my tent to get them when they're on the table to look similar to the other ones. It's going to be it's going to be a really tough challenge. Okay, Ooh, boy, we about broke that piece on the back. That would have sucked. We are just about done with the black. And look, we did not paint on his ears. We managed to save the ears. How about that? Mm. So I think what I'm going to do is mix in just a little bit of this intermediate blue with the previous color. Um, and do some final little spot highlights and edging with this. There we go. So I had this really nice kind of middle gray, but I don't know where he's gone. So I'm going to have to make do with a mix.
first two part resin pour I messed up. I just wanted to give it a class. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, that should be easy enough. I um I got really lucky. I mean the the temperature was just right, the humidity was just right. I had syringes to measure the A and B part mixes. So it was just it was perfect. And I kind of worry now because it's winter, so it's gonna be cooler in my uh my office is cooler in my office. Um, the humidity is going to be drier. I just hope that I'm able to uh, replicate the ease I had with the, the first batches of uh, resin. Because it could very easily go the other way, you know, now that the conditions in the the room have changed. Keep on happy painting. See you next time. All right, Varric, have a great day. Thank you for stopping in. Do appreciate it. Always good to see another painter here. Or another weird painter here, sorry. I know we got other painters. But they're another weird painter. They're family. Ohana means family. <laughs> Okay, so sorry, we got kind of sidetracked there with a little little correction. So we're just putting in these final black highlights here. And uh, then we'll be moving on. Oop, we are way off screen, sorry about that. We didn't really paint anything, we were just kind of setting up for it. We saw we were off screen, yay. Did something about it. Fantastic. I have uh, I have been falling off screen a lot more of lately. I guess because I've not been getting as much streaming practice. I have not been doing my regular streams on my channel. I've just been so busy. Um, so I haven't been streaming on the weekends. Um, and it's apparent. I mean, because I, I would stay pretty well locked in frame all the time, but I'm falling out quite a lot now. So <clears throat> I need to get back into my, get back into practice, start streaming on the weekends and fix this frame issue. Kilky. Okay, I think we're pretty well done with the black. Oh, man. 
Damn, we're getting close to the end. Shoot. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Um, get a wash on those, uh, on those clogs of his real quick. What do we want to use? Not that, not that. Maybe this. We'll use the contrast. <clears throat> Thank you, weird hobbies. Man, time just went by, didn't it? I was thinking, oh, we got plenty of time because I'm not nearly nearly done with this model. And I almost always finish one on stream. But uh, yeah, this one, I spent way too much time on this again. So he's not even close to being done. That's okay. That's okay. We'll finish him up. So we're using a little Gilman flesh here. For these uh, bamboo shoes or flats, clogs, whatever, whatever they call these thingies. <laughs> uh, we'll pull a little bit onto the uh, bamboo as well. But yeah, if you guys would, if you haven't already, please like, follow, subscribe, those social medias. That would be greatly appreciated. Won't cost you nothing if you do. Just make you a little cooler in my book. And uh, if you're not already following Play Weird, I mean, why are you here? Please go ahead and drop them a follow as well. Um, next time you see me, which will be the first Wednesday in December, we will be starting on a Waldo holiday model, the uh, teddy rug or the chimney one. I haven't decided yet, but it'd be one of those because we want to keep it kind of festive. Um, <clears throat> and that'll probably bring us to a close on the year will be that model. So thank you everybody for coming out. We're just going to put this final little touch in here before we those out there we go got that wash going or contrast going and uh that's going to finish this up so i want to thank everybody again for coming out and uh we'll see you wednesday after next i think no whatever the first wednesday of december uh, everybody have a safe and happy thanksgiving or whatever holiday y'all celebrate this month um until we see you again, good luck, stay safe, hobby on, stay weird.